Some things in life just don't go together. So we actually did a video on five skincare combinations previously and we stated ingredients that shouldn't be combined because if they are, it actually causes inflammation, irritation and more breakouts. So we couldn't fit everything in that video. So today we're gonna give you guys five more skincare combinations to not mix. And more than just ingredients we should not mix, we're also gonna talk about skincare steps that we could be doing wrong and how to fix it. Fix it. Because some of these skincare steps you might not even know you're kind of ordering in the wrong way, which is actually not very beneficial and doesn't do the product justice. So make sure you stay until the very end because I'm sure some of you guys are making these little mistakes that actually cause much bigger problems in the long run. Skincare is different from person to person. So keep in mind that everything we say isn't gonna be the same for everyone. And it's always good to learn more so that we can know more about our skins and to know more about how we can do things the right way. Yeah, <laughs> save yourself. So before we share with you guys our secrets, make sure you click subscribe. Do you see that little join button next to the subscribe? Join our channel membership. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so our memberships have launched, which is pretty much every month we're gonna give you guys two extra videos, which is exclusive content just for members. So these videos will include things like Q&A, fun challenges, behind the scenes, or just like extended footage of videos that we make that you wanna know more information about. Or just any Anything you guys want to watch, leave it in the comment section below. So as you mull over whether to join the Beauty Within membership, join us! <laughs> Let's jump into the video. Spot treatments and moisturizers. So this one might seem a little basic. It's like, I already know how to use my spot treatment. But have you ever wondered if you're actually using your spot treatment correctly? Maybe not. Should you put it on before or after your moisturizer? If you use spot treatment in the wrong order of your skincare routine, you could actually cause more harm on your skin. So first of all, what is a spot treatment? It's basically a concentrate of active ingredients that are made to help breakouts and inflammation go down in a certain spot or area. So you'll see spot treatments in different forms, but they all are made to do generally what was said before. So the first one that you'll see is kind of like a pink powder lotion with some what looks like water on the top of it. So this is actually calamine powder with alcohol. And how you use these is that you dip a Q-tip to grab a little bit of the powder and then on the way out, it coats it in some alcohol to disinfect your zit and your pimple. And Kate, some Maville makes this, Etude House makes this, as well as Mario Badescu, and they're all generally the same thing. And then there's also salicylic acid, which is a BHA, which helps break down sebum and pore clogging like debris in your pores, which is basically what causes pimples. And then the third type of spot treatment is using essential oils, much like tea tree, which is a really good spot treatment. Or you can find things like these ones, which also have different essential oils. This one has citrus and lavender and thyme. Through the passage of time, your pimple will go away. So there are two things when it comes to spot treatments that you might be doing wrong. Doing. First, is that you wanna use it at the very end of applying all your skincare products at night. So if you're putting it on straight after you cleanse and then putting on serums and moisturizers and facial oils, you're actually spreading it around to places and areas that you don't necessarily want the spot treatment to go, like around the eye area, which is really sensitive, and you're also diluting that spot treatment. Secondly, what you might be doing wrong or you might not actually think about is that spot treatments work most effectively when a pimple or a blackhead or whatever it is has actually been extracted. So that way the ingredients can seep into your pores and really disinfect the area from the root. Whereas if you were to put something over like an upcoming pimple, all you're doing is possibly just drying out the surface layer of the skin. So this might not be as effective, but with the exception of cysts, because cysts will never turn into a whitehead or pop because it's so far down in the layers of your skin, it will never see the light of day. So I definitely love my spot treatments, but make sure you're using it in the right stage of your skincare routine so you get the maximum benefits of it. 
using your day cream during the night and using your night cream during the day. So this one sounds pretty obvious, but it's a combo that definitely should not be mixed because it can cause a lot of breakouts. And I can personally attest to this. It seems pretty harmless, but it actually has huge effects. There's a reason why there are day creams and night creams out there, and it's not just to steer your money in forms of different packaging. It's got everything to do with how our skins and body works to regenerate new cells and tissues. Your skin is in its peak state of repair at night, and you're tucked away in bed counting sheep. The majority of cell turnovers and regeneration occurs when the body is in its REM sleep, and REM stands for rapid eye movement, which is a shallow, dream-filled sleep. During sleep, the heartbeats move more slowly, breathing becomes slower, growth hormone peaks, muscle relax, and body temperature lowers. So why are we talking about all of this? Our skin needs different things during different times of the day, so we need to apply different products to help with each stage of the day. Let's start with day creams. Day creams are generally more lightweight in consistency and paired with a good sunscreen during the day to prevent damage whilst being out and about. Also, because your skin and body is active, it's producing oils and sweat and obviously not repairing itself like it is at night. It is hungry for different things. As for night creams, night creams are packed with essential ingredients that aid cell turnover like retinoids, peptides, all which help soothe and repair the skin. So they're generally thicker and more nourishing because the skin can get very dehydrated during the night and drinks up more of whatever you put on. Hydration levels decline at night, making nighttime moisturizing an important step. This affects how well your skin can defy aging too. So don't use your day creams during the night and don't use your night creams during the day because if you use a night cream during the daytime, it's too thick and nourishing and just for me, from personal experience, it's, it gets too oily and glossy. The consistency is too heavy during the daytime. And at night, if I use a day cream, my skin wakes up so dehydrated and parched. So make sure you're not using products designed for the night during the day and vice versa. So day creams we love using are more gel-like in consistency and are far more lightweight compared to night creams. And a few samples are L'Occitane and Oleg Henriksen. And for night creams, I personally love the Drunk Elephant Marula oil at night. And same with Felicia, we both don't use oils during the day but at night it is very very nourishing benzoyl peroxide and moisturizer so this one's more about the order in which we apply it on our face so in our previous video we talked a lot about benzoyl peroxide so you can go into that one if you want a little bit more in depth benzoyl peroxide is basically just one of those go-to acne medicated ingredients much like salicylic acid and also sulfur but they all work in different ways so benzoyl peroxide is an antimicrobial which means that it works to kill acne causing bacteria in your pores so it's more useful for papules and pustules which are larger inflamed bumps on the skin because they tend to have more bacterial overgrowth but if it's things like whiteheads or blackheads benzoyl peroxide is not needed for that that's just way too strong for those things so one thing you might be doing wrong is when using benzoyl peroxide don't use this without actually applying a moisturizer first when it comes to using benzoyl peroxide make sure you always apply a moisturizer before spot treating or using anything with benzoyl peroxide so studies have shown that if you take care of the skin barrier first and hydrate it with moisturizer it actually allows the benzoyl peroxide to work more effectively because most of the time if you have like a group of pimples or breakouts you think slathering on the most acne medicated ingredients is what's going to kill it but this is actually what can cause more irritation and more inflammation because sometimes the medicated benzoyl peroxide is too strong for you so it comes in 2% 5% and 10% I would highly recommend that you start from as little as possible. So with benzoyl peroxide, just keep in mind that the more isn't always better and the higher and stronger it is, the more it could actually inflame your skin. So just be really careful of that and make sure you moisturize before applying any type of spot treatment with benzoyl peroxide. Flaky skin exfoliation. So during the winter months, my neck gets super flaky and super dry and my first instinct is to peel it off either with a gel peel or like a physical exfoliating scrub. And it does does temporarily make my skin smoother but I've learned now that it's actually the worst thing to do because when your skin is flaky and dry it's actually begging for you to hydrate it and, and to give it more nourishment we mentioned this in depth in our dry versus dehydrated video that we'll link up here so there's actually a huge difference between dull skin and dry skin if you have a lot of flaking it means that your skin is lacking a lot of hydration and moisture so during this time do not heavily exfoliate exfoliating at this time can cause more disruptions to the skin barrier and inflammation making your skin Worse. Concentrate on layers and moisturizing and finish with facial oils so that not only is the deeper layers of the skin happy, but the surface layer of the skin is also happily watered like a plant. Also, if your skin is flaking, find moisturizers rich in emollients to soothe out rough and dry skin cells. So topical treatments are really important when dealing with flaky dry skin and here are a couple of our recommendations. So I've been loving the Innisfree Orchid Intense Cream. 
It's super thick and creamy in consistency, which is great for nighttime. And there's the Dove Derma E Series Replenishing Face Cream, which is super, super nourishing and would only be recommended for those with really seriously dry skin. So this is one that's really popular if you ever search for ingredients not to use together, and this one will always come up. First of all, what is vitamin C? Pure vitamin C is also known as L-ascorbic acid, and it's really temperamental as an ingredient because if it's not applied to a certain pH level, it actually won't work. And this is why you'll see a lot of vitamin C derivatives rather than the pure vitamin C in a lot of skincare products because it's a little bit more hassle-free to use and also keep. So the superpowers of vitamin C are, it's an antioxidant that can reduce signs of aging, it helps boost collagen production, it helps fade dark spots and brightens the skin tone, and it's actually a naturally occurring antioxidant. Now, niacinamide, on the other hand, is a vitamin B3. It improves skin barrier function, assists in smoothing irritations and rosacea, fights free radicals, helps fight acne by helping regulate sebum production, and it helps fade dark spots and brightens the skin tone, and it's also water soluble. So seeing as they both help to brighten the skin and also help fade things like spots and hyperpigmentation, why can't they be used together? Mixing niacinamides and L-ascorbic acids can turn it into a niacin, which is a substance that can cause redness and tingling. And this might show up if you have sensitive skin or have inflammatory acne hyperpigmentation, and it kind of looks like a rash on the skin, but it is temporary. Secondly, sometimes when you mix niacinamide and vitamin C together, it comes up as this yellow or orangey solution. And if you see this color combination, it's actually like the death of vitamin C because it means it's oxidized and they've canceled each other out and it's basically ineffective on your skin. So that was the long running understanding of why you shouldn't mix these two together. But now if you search up new products that contain these ingredients as well as skincare experts, they all say it's actually safe to use it. So the takeaway are three things. If you want to use it, just make sure if you have sensitive skin, inflamed skin, acne prone skin, I would still suggest that you, to be on the safe side, stay away from it. Also, keep in mind that vitamin C is a little bit of a hassle to use as an ingredient because every time that vitamin C is exposed to light, heat or air, it actually speeds up the process that it oxidizes and it smells like vinegar. And that's the sign that you shouldn't be using that anymore. And that's the myth. So if you guys were on the fence about whether or not to use vitamin C and niacinamide, yes, you can, theoretically. It's just play it safe, try it on your own skin and see what happens. If there's any tingling or flushing, which is the niacin effect happening, then stop using it right away and just use one at a time. So we have some recommendations for you guys if you guys are interested. Rowena is a huge vitamin C gal. So we have Drunk Elephant Sea Firma Day Cream. Just make sure you pair this with a good sunscreen because your face will burn if not. So then there's also the Oz Naturals Vitamin C Facial Serum and in this it's also got vitamin E, rosehip and hyaluronic acid. So it's a little concoction of vitamin C. And then I actually have this Dr. Dennis Gross Brightening and Firming Vitamin C Serum as well. But I'm going to show you what oxidized vitamin C looks like and what you should stay away from using when it becomes like this. Zoom up. Over here. So if I pump it out, you see how dark orange that is? It went from like yellow to just full on orange and that's maybe not always the case, but if it's a pure vitamin C, if it oxidizes to this color, I wouldn't use it. And then if you like smell it, it is so acidic. It almost smells like apple cider vinegar and that's just like something to stay away from. <laughs> so guys, that was our second part of this skincare combination series. We hope you guys learned a little bit more about skincare steps in your routine. It's not that you shouldn't mix and it's not like black and white, but you should be more mindful of and test yourself because at the end of the day, we all have different skin. So for me, I have very dry, dehydrated, parched skin in combination during the warmer yeah. months, so just all over the place. And same with Felicia, but in her own way, she's very oily. Yeah. So with all of this, it's good to do your own research and figure out what really works for us, mostly through trial and error, but it's, yeah. it'll, it'll be worth it. <laughs> so make sure you subscribed to our channel if you haven't already. Make sure you join our member, join the little button right there, and we'll give you guys exclusive content, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye!